the professor emeritus of sociology at, the, uh, at Cal Berkeley and a man who has been a staff consultant to the 49ers and the Warriors for years. Uh, I had the pleasure of speaking to him multiple times on NFL Network, certainly when issues like this come to the forefront in a sports world. He is none other than Dr. Harry Edwards now here on The Rich Eisen Show. Dr. Edwards, thanks for taking the call. Thanks a lot for having me, Rich. Of course. What, are you, what, what is your first blush thought when you hear that these two kids got expelled from campus in Oklahoma? Well, I don't think that the president had any choice. I think that uh, the amount of attention that this has attracted uh, really uh, compelled uh, action that was to the point and uh, very, very uh, 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 dramatic. And um, what he's dealing with is not just uh, what we saw on the video. It, it, it's what's not seen that, that's, so, uh, that's so critically important. It's like the football team having an athlete decommit. Uh, that's one thing. But then you have to wonder how many athletes out there are now saying, hey, that's not a place that I, that I want to go. Uh, that they will never hear about or hear from. They just won't show up at the University of Oklahoma. So the president is trying to deal with all of that uh, stuff that's seen and unseen, and I think that steps he uh, took was, uh, were probably warranted, but that's not enough. Dr. Edwards, uh, so what, what should we be discussing in this discourse that, uh, again, um, happens on a campus? It involves, in, in, in a certain way, a football program because a player decommits, won't go to the school based on something that had nothing to do with the football program. What should we be discussing on this subject, in your estimation? Well, I think that you should be discussing the links between uh, athletics and the rest of the campus community. Typically, under these kinds of circumstances, you have one of three things that have happened, and sometimes more. Uh, those three things are, are first, uh, everything was all right, which is typically the way that the um, uh, uh, administration and the athletic department tends to see uh, race relations on the campus, uh, or you have a situation where somebody was not being heard, or you have a situation where somebody is not listening. And in this situation, uh, if I can believe my contacts and colleagues at the University of Oklahoma, that I've spoken to, uh, it's the latter two. Somebody wasn't being heard and, and somebody was not listening. Uh, the football program is a part of this, uh, of this community, and therefore it is quite legitimate for, uh, to be discussing this in, um, on a program such as yours because uh, uh, football and, and the um, uh, athletic department are part of this community. Now, another problem here, Rich, is this. Yes. You, look at the, you look at the athletic department, you look at the football program, uh, and you watch uh, Oklahoma doing uh, their spring uh, season game, uh, and it looks like uh, Ghana playing Nigeria. But if you look at the administration, you look at the student body count, you look at the faculty numbers in terms of black representation, and you may as well be looking at Denmark. And so there is a real problem there uh, in terms of understanding the dynamics of what they're involved with. So the football program has been very successful in recruiting blacks, but for some reason the climate on the campus is not conducive to recruiting African Americans and other uh, positions in that community. Well, it also that seems, uh, Dr. Harry Edwards, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, that this is an issue in management across all sports in, in, in sports, you know, uh, obviously, the NFL uh, having a program in place over the past few years trying to make sure that African-American candidates get interviews for head coaching positions and also in management. I know you've been involved yes. with that with Major League Baseball as well. W what do you attribute the issue to on that front other than just, uh, I guess I'll just ask you, what, what do you attribute the issue well, on I that front Well, I think that there are deeply rooted, um, uh, extremely um, intractable, uh, conventions, definitions, traditions of, uh, uh, of, of exclusivity, of uh, failure to include that uh, are very, very difficult to deal with because nobody talks about them in the open. We have yet to have a nationwide, honest and open conversation about race and inclusiveness in this country. <clears throat> and it's not just an issue of African Americans with whites and so forth. We're fighting a global war against jihadism, trying to demonstrate to the rest of the world that we have a better S S answer. We have a better uh, ideological understanding of human relations, that we uh, pro have, a, have a greater promise uh, than some of these death, death cults and so forth that we're dealing with. We can't do that 
We're talking about stopping recruitment of jihadists out of the Middle East and so forth. We can't even stop the Crips and Bloods from recruiting our middle class students in our urban centers. We have got to get on top of this thing, and this is simply a reflection of it uh, at an academic institution. But it's uh, basically an American problem, and it's a lack of an honest, open conversation about race and inclusivity and democracy in American society. And then we have uh, in the sports discourse just in the last 24 hours, Dr. Edwards, a member of the media basically accusing a coach in Philadelphia, a white coach in Philadelphia, of getting rid of players based on race. And, and, and that is how, and sometimes we get a discourse in the sports world, and I'm wondering what you think of that, Dr. Edwards. Well, I don't think that coaches uh, uh, necessarily get rid of uh, players on the basis of race, but I don't think that you can eliminate race from considerations of why uh, they might get rid of players. I mean, it could be contract size. It could be simply they can find somebody else cheaper to do the same thing. They want to move in a different direction. This is not the person because of age, infirmity, or whatever, or career length that uh, they want to go forward with. There are all kinds of factors that come into it. And race may not be the one thing that tips the scale, but there's no question that inevitably uh, race comes into almost anything where you have um, this uh, a diversity of, uh, of, of people involved. We, we, we need to have an open and honest conversation and discussion about this so that this nation can move, can move ahead. How do we do that, Dr. Edwards? Well, I think we have to start by dealing with, uh, with the realities of the situation. We can't, uh, for example, be talking about uh, a post-racial America simply because we have an African-American family uh, in the White House when you have uh, individuals uh, in police departments and in other high positions, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, posting emails uh, characterizing uh, the president of the United States as a chimpanzee. You, 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 we, we, we need to be honest about who we are, where we've come from, and we've come a long way, but there's so much farther to go, and we're not going to uh, make that journey unless we make it together. We're not going anywhere uh, as a society that blacks and whites and Latinos, women and men, don't go together. And that also holds for our sports institutions. Well, doesn't it start at home, too, Dr. Edwards, if we really want to have this conversation? Because my wife and I will never send any of our children to an institution of higher learning and have them have a mindset where they would make a video like that, that they, was made in Oklahoma. I mean, th uh, that is just beyond the pale. And, 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 and to have somebody at an institution of higher learning where you would think that they would have a certain mindset that wouldn't be open to just saying these sorts of things, let alone believing it, well, I, I don't understand how that happens. So doesn't it start at the grassroots level, as in, in, in everybody's homes in the United States of America, Dr. It, Edwards? It, it, it starts at the home. Everything starts at home. And sometimes uh, that start can be kind of shaky. Some people can tell their children the realities of race and uh, gender relations in American society. Uh, other parents might say nothing and their kids are simply not exposed to it and then they get into a uh, cultural climate, a community climate on a college campus where there's tremendous peer pressure to conform, uh, to be part of the group and they hear these things and see these things and not only uh, do they not uh, know how to counter that in terms of uh, their own attitudes and dispositions because uh, uh, it was basically a situation of silence. Nobody discussing these issues up front and honestly in the home or in the schools that they went to, they wind up getting into the flow, becoming part of it, and the next thing you know they're sitting on a bus and you have some chant like this going on. Somebody videotaped that uh, and put it online. What their motivations were, what their incentives were, I don't know. But uh, if it had not leaked out, we would not be having this discussion, and perhaps uh, the community at the University of Oklahoma uh, would not be waking up to the fact that we have a pervasive climate here that at a minimum is so weak that it allows this kind of thing to fester and grow and be expressed uh, it, to such a degree that people don't mind being taped making uh, those kinds of comments. Uh, Dr. Harry Edwards, Professor Emeritus of Sociology at Cal Berkeley, before I let you go, uh, I want you to put on your hat of a San Francisco 49ers um, f uh, organization and I'll give you a, about a minute to have the floor on Patrick Willis, who is going to uh, announce his retirement in about a couple of hours from now. Uh, for uh, the length of time that he played, 
uh, to have accomplished what he did, to have been the leader that he was, to have been the professional that he was, I think that he is going to be in a Hall of Fame conversation uh, just as surely as that five-year period rolls around. He was a great player for us. Uh, he played uh, oftentimes what they call dinged up, what uh, us normal human beings would call injured. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, he played, and not only that, he turned in all pro uh, Hall of Fame type of performances at times when I knew. I watched him during the week walking around barely able uh, to put his uniform on to go to practice. So uh, he's, a, um, he's a man's man in that sense. He's a pro's pro, and uh, I think he's her- headed for, uh, for Canton, and the San Francisco 49ers are diminished uh, by uh, his retirement. Dr. Edwards, uh, it's been way too long since you and I spoke, and I'm glad that we had this opportunity on the Rich Eisen Show, to which I hope you return soon. Thank you very much, Rich. I appreciate it. Of course. That's Dr. Harry Edwards, noted sociologist, professor emeritus of sociology at Cal Berkeley. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.